Genie Plus change. So we're putting it to the test here at Disney's Animal Kingdom where it's already shaping up to be a wild day. Hello, ma'am, fam, and welcome back to another episode of our Genie Plus series. This is episode three. We've already done this at Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios, and today it's Disney's Animal Kingdom's turn. We are putting the newly priced Genie Plus to the test and breaking it down by how much time you actually save paying for the service and how much it costs you per attraction to help you decide, is it worth it for you park by park? Animal Kingdom is usually the least expensive of the parks, but it's also super, super busy here today. So I think it's gonna be very interesting what we find out, but we've got a lot to do. Let's get to it. And for your abridged version of the updates, previously Genie Plus cost the same per person per day, regardless of which park, or if you were going to multiple parks, you were visiting per day. Now it did vary day by day, so it'd be more expensive in peak season than value season, but it was the same regardless if you were going to Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, or all four parks in a day. Now it is priced per park. Again, Animal Kingdom's usually the least expensive. It cost me $16 today. Magic Kingdom is usually the most expensive with the other parks falling in between, or you can purchase the park hopper option. Let's head to our first attraction and we'll do a quick Genie 101. I know if you've been watching the series, you've heard most of this before, but just a quick refresh. If you're like me, then the more times you hear and see something, the better you understand it. And since you can't exactly practice coming to Walt Disney World and maximizing your vacation, I'm hoping that uh, me doing this over and over again is helpful for people. Quick Genie 101. Free Genie is just the personalized itineraries, dining tip board, tip board, predictive wait times in the app. Genie Plus, which is what we're focusing on in this series, is a per person cost per day, and it allows you access to over 40 different attractions throughout the four Walt Disney World parks into an expedited queue. You can book those attractions on a next available basis in the My Disney Experience app, and you can only book each attraction once per day. Fancy rides, as I call them, are individual cost per rides to skip that queue. The fanciest or newest attraction at each of the parks, for these videos, we're not doing fancy rides since they weren't impacted by the Genie Plus changes, but in this park, it would be Avatar Flight of Passage. When it comes to fancy rides though, Disney World Resort guests can book them starting at 7 a.m. Non-Disney World Resort guests can book them at the time that park opens. Both Genie Plus and fancy rides have lightning lanes. That's just the physical queue at the attraction, if you hear me say that. Uh, and you don't have to purchase Genie Plus to buy a fancy ride and vice versa. When it comes to booking Genie Plus, anybody can book it starting at 7 a.m., resort guest or not. I've been distracted. Scrooge McDuck and Launchpad McQuack are out on the water. Hey guys, what are you doing? You sailing off on an adventure to Duckburg? You guys remember that show? That theme song slaps, let's be honest. Also, we got a new camera. I'm really loving it. I think the picture looks great. I'm. Uh, hoping the sound sounds better as well, um, but I'm still figuring it out, so bear with me a little bit. I've just ordered a stabilizer because I feel like I'm Blair Witch projecting in here. So anyway, let's back it up to 7 a.m. this morning. Actually, let's back it up to 2 a.m. this morning. That's when I purchased Genie Plus. Genie Plus is available starting at midnight day of. You don't have to stay up till midnight or 2 a.m. if you're not a night person like me, but just make sure you've got it all ready to go prior to 7 a.m. and you can book that first attraction. I booked Navi River Journey, which despite not being the most popular attraction in the park, it is one of the ones that goes the quickest at Animal Kingdom as far as lightning lanes go. It gave me like a 10.30 a.m. return time, but I knew I didn't want to go into Pandora until later in the day just because there's lots of live animals and shows that close earlier than Pandora does, so I wanted to save that one. So I've been using the modify feature throughout the day to just push it back a little bit. The modify feature is one of my favorite things in Genie Plus. It allows you to take a current lightning lane and modify it for another time for that attraction or a different ride in that park based on availability, of course. But it allows you to secure lightning lanes and then change them as needed throughout the day. Now, because Animal Kingdom opens at 8, booking an after 10 a.m. lightning lane for Navi River Journey, I did trigger that 120 minute rule. So let's recap that real quick before we get to our first ride. With Genie Plus, you can book your next attraction. Either A, you've used the first one, B, it expires if you don't use it for some reason, or C, it's been 120 minutes since you booked the first one, whichever comes first. Now, as a little caveat, if you book prior to the park opening, starting at 7 a.m., that 120 minutes doesn't actually start until the park opens. So at 7 a.m., I booked Navi River Journey. At 8 a.m., Animal Kingdom opened, which meant at 10 a.m., I was able to book another lightning lane. 
I initially booked Kilimanjaro safaris because that's also very popular um, and it has a very long line. It's got a hundred minute line right now, but life happens. I was working on some other things. Realized I was going to get to the park a little bit later. I didn't want to ride safaris in the middle of the day because you don't really see that many animals. Um, so I decided to modify it for Expedition Everest, which is what we're here to do now. Also to answer a question I've seen in the comments a few times, once you've booked an attraction and either you've used it or that 120 minute rule happens or something like that, that attraction doesn't mean anything anymore as far as booking your next one. It's only based on your most recently booked attraction. So Navi River Journey, even if it's not the last thing I ride today, that doesn't trigger me being allowed to book another one or anything. Again, it's based on whatever you've booked most recently. Hopefully that helps. Now, our first attraction today is Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM. This is a very popular attraction, although it doesn't always have a super long line. It's pretty busy today. Again, Safaris has a hundred minute queue right now, and it's still only 40 minutes at Expedition Everest. That said, it's hot in this park. 40 minutes is 40 minutes, so I think the Lightning Lane is going to be a good choice right now. Expedition Everest has a 44 inch height requirement and is one of my favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World. This is the attraction where you're gonna scale the 199 foot tall Forbidden Mountain as you enter the lair of the Yeti. Jumping into the lightning lane, I'll have my phone ready to go. What I've been doing in these videos is I've been timing how long it takes to get on the attraction from the lightning lane. And then I am having the mathematician at home track the difference between that and the standby queue to see how much time you're actually saving getting in the lightning lane. And then we're also tracking how much it costs per attraction when you break it down ride by ride with knowing the cost per day. Now, as I was saying, Expedition Everest, even though it's incredibly popular, doesn't usually have that long of a line, comparatively speaking. That's because it can load a lot of people at a time. It's got a very high ride capacity. But one thing to keep in mind, it will close because of lightning in the area, which during the summertime means pretty much every day in the afternoon. So if you're coming to the park and you want to do Everest, you may want to knock it out earlier rather than later because those storms usually come in the mid-afternoon. There we go. She actually remembered her magic band today. All right, let's start the clock. I am obsessed with this attraction. I think the Imagineering is so good. And the last time I rode it, and in the Roller Coaster Challenge video, if you haven't watched that one, check it out, see how the roller coasters stack up to each other in Disney World. I thought about how it would be really fun to do a Expedition Everest movie. I mean, we're getting Haunted Mansion, we've got Jungle Cruise. So Dreamcast someone in the Expedition Everest movie down in the comments, and maybe we'll get Disney to pay attention to us once, you know, the writers and the actors get paid. Expedition Everest done. I love that attraction. I think it is so much fun. 40 minute posted wait actually took 3.5 in the lightning lane. For the sake of this experiment, we're going to take the standby cues at their value and say that they're accurate. So I definitely think on a day like today, it is worth it to use it at Expedition Everest. Once I tapped in at Expedition Everest, I went ahead and booked the next showing of Finding Nemo, The Big, The Blue, and Beyond. Typically, there are only four Finding Nemo shows a day right now. And I talked about this a lot in the Studios episode, but shows operate a little bit differently than attractions when it comes to Genie Plus, because attractions can constantly load people throughout the day, so they can offer Genie return times at noon, and at 12.05, and at 12.10, and at 12.15, and so on and so forth. Whereas a show only has so many show times a day, and so therefore they only offer so many set show return times. So typically they're 30, or so minutes prior to the show beginning. And another difference is once that window has started, you can't book it anymore. So for example, the next Finding Nemo show is at one o'clock. The return window was 12.30 to 12.45. Once it becomes 12.30, you can't book that anymore. It goes away and it'll give you the next one. So you have to be careful when you're trying to book the shows. It's a little more rigid than the attractions. And because I have quite a few shows I have to contend with here at Animal Kingdom, I wanted to go ahead and start clicking one off. 
Now, I do have like 15 minutes till that return window is closed. So I am going to go grab something to eat, a little sticky snack quick, and then get back to Nemo. They don't have any picnic tables available, so you know what that means. Trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Dak edition. Roar. For my little sneaky snack, I went to Trilo Bites, a little stand at the beginning of um, Dino Land, and I got the buffalo chicken chips. These are house-made kettle chips topped with buffalo chicken, blue cheese, celery, tomato. They also have um, a Dole Whip there. They've got beers, margaritas, drinks, but I was in the mood for savory. They are very good. They're not super spicy. It's more of a mild buffalo sauce. Taste that creamy blue cheese. I like the crispness from the chip as well as the celery. They're a very good underrated snack. I just am a little disappointed by the ratio. I wish there was more of the chicken and the blue cheese. Cause there's a lot of chips here. Now it's not gonna go very far. I constantly say that I think this park is such a good park for food. I think it's tied with Epcot probably as far as food goes, non-festival Epcot. There's a lot of really good snacks here. All right, chips consumed. Even in the heat, they were delicious. Of course, they're more delicious when it's less hot outside. But as I kept eating them, they got a little bit more of that buffalo flavor. So maybe a mild to medium. Very tasty if you like buffalo. And now we're swimming on over to the theater in the wild to watch Finding Nemo, the big, the blue, the beyond. When Finding Nemo opened, it was called Finding Nemo the Musical. It's never been my favorite, and that's not just because it replaced Tarzan Rocks, which was one of my favorite shows in all of Walt Disney World. Anyone remember Tarzan Rocks? It was so fun. The, I mean, Phil Collins didn't have to go that hard, but he did. And then they didn't have to have acrobatic monkeys and Tarzan swinging on vines, but they did. There were monkeys doing BMX tricks, live band. It was amazing. I'm a little sad about it. Anyway, Finding Nemo. The Big, the Blue, the Beyond has these beautiful, I will, you know, flowers where flowers are due, gorgeous puppets of the different Finding Nemo characters. Very good original music written by the Lopez's who are who wrote the music for Frozen. It's just not my favorite. Finding Nemo, despite having a shark, isn't my favorite story to begin with. And while again, the music is good and written by very talented people, I don't know why they had to write new music as opposed to using one of the mini animal themed movies Disney already owns that has memorable and delightful music. But I do appreciate the abridged version, the newer version of this, the Big Blue Beyond version, because it's shorter and it's a little more easy to understand. Another reason it's good that it's shorter, it's about 25 minutes now. The original version was like 40. The seats are horribly incomplete. But you know what? It is 25 minutes sitting in air conditioning and some people love this show. So I don't want to impose my views on you, except for credit to the performers who are all wonderful. The puppets are cool. The end. Anyway, the way I figure out if the shows are worth it or not with the lightning lane is I ask the cast members how early they would tell a guest to arrive if they weren't using a lightning lane today. And the cast member said 15 minutes early, which coincidentally is how early you have to get here to tap in with your lightning lane. Typically with rides, if you're five or so minutes late and are nice to the cast members, they'll still let you on. But shows are much stricter because again, they have a certain start time. Um, so they can't just put you on the next ride vehicle. So they said I would have to get here 15 minutes before showtime if I wasn't using a lightning lane, which is also what time I had to get here with a lightning lane. So I saved zero time. Now, where to sit? All right, now that I'm seated, I'm gonna book something next. You can see up here, it says I can book one now. That's very helpful with the 120 minute rule. Um, I always like to set an alarm if it has a certain time right here, uh, a minute or two beforehand, so I know what time I can book. Uh, okay, animation experience, that's all the way across the park. A dinosaur, that's nearby, 2.35 return time, almost an hour long wait. Feathered Friends in Flight, that's the bird show. I need to be mindful of that one as well. But the next show starts at 1.30, I will never get there in time. Festival of the Lion King, that's pretty far away too. Cali River Rapids has been closed all day, no lightning lanes available to the point that when I walked in the park, I got a push notification apologizing that it's down, which honestly, I'm not upset about it, but that means Cali may not get achieved today. Um, let's see, Kilimanjaro as far as 120 minute wait, but it does have lightning lanes available pretty readily. And meeting Mickey and Minnie, 45 minute wait, three o'clock return time. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to book next. I think I might book Dinosaur and then Fiddle Faddle to see if I can get a closer time. Fiddle Faddle is just my term for refreshing the modify screen to see if I can get another time. 
something closer. So what I'm going to do once my day loads, bum, 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 I'm going to click these three dots and I'm going to click modify plan. And then I'm just going to pull this down and see if a closer time pops up uh, while I wait for the show to get started. Because dinosaur is pretty close and I'm trying not to weave too much back and forth throughout the park. And I'm kind of in between shows right here. I bet they're wondering how we even ended up here. Finding Nemo the Musical, check it off the list. It is a show that you can see here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I will say my favorite part is when the sharks start singing their song. They're, they subtly play a few notes from the Jaws theme song in the background. Not a lot of people catch that Easter egg, but Jaws is the best. And it's a fun detail to notice. You know what? Hats off to the performers. We'll say that. Now, I was able to bump up Dinosaur like 30 minutes before the show started. And then after the show, as I was walking out or letting people walk out in front of me, I grabbed a two o'clock meeting of Mickey and Minnie. Um, that one is one of the ones that does run out the quickest here. It usually closes a little bit earlier than the park. Today it closes at six, the park closes at seven. And the lightning lanes were already looking in the four o'clock hour. So I was kind of had my eye on it because I didn't want them to run out for the rest of the day. Um, so swapping a two o'clock dinosaur for a two o'clock Mickey and Minnie, I think was a good move because I'll be able to get dinosaur later. Um, so I've got like 30-ish minutes. Um, the other attractions that I kind of have to worry about are Feathered Friends in Flight, because that's another show, Fessel the Lion King, um, and the Animation Experience. Those are all like set shows. So my goal is I'm going to hope to tap in fast enough at the Mickey and Minnie meet and greet so that I can book the next Feathered Friends in Flight. I spent the last 20 minutes working out my very tricky plan for the day. It is like tight, the rest of the schedule for the day. But again, these videos are just to show you tips and tricks on how to use the system, kind of a fun way to explain Genie Plus. The best way to use it is, of course, mixing and matching standby lines and using lightning lanes as well. All right, made it to Adventures Outpost, which is where Mickey and Minnie do their meet and greets. Perfect. Typically, lightning lanes have a five minute grace period on the front end, so I'm tapping in at 155. So now I can book the next bird show, which the window for that starts at two o'clock. It's super duper cute in here. I'm next to meet Mickey and Minnie. It was a posted 55 minute wait and it took me 13 and a half minutes to get right here. So I think this one's definitely worth it. Mickey and Minnie usually get a pretty long line here because it's the only place that you could meet the two of them together. And I just looked at my Disney experience and they are out of lightning lanes for the day. That's not to say you couldn't come back with some fiddle faddling, but just saying that this is one that will run out throughout the day. You're so cute. <laughs> LOL, it's zooming in. One of the parrots from the show where they, they gather in front of the Tree of Life, a couple of the parrots, I guess, aren't going back to their home. But like, we're hanging out here now. Bye. All right, have fun, guys. Headed in to Asia to see Feathered Friends in Flight. This is a bird show. And I actually quite enjoy it, even though birds are not my favorite animal. Uh, apparently they have a shark show. Don't know what that's about. But it started as Winged Encounters, and it was an educational show about birds. And then it became Up a Great Bird Adventure. It still had live birds, but it was less about the birds and more about the Up characters. And now it's Feathered Friends in Flight, which is back to its original roots of being an educational show about birds. We've got live birds here, as well as some of the animal keepers, and they come teach you fun things about birds. And there's someone who loves... Oh my gosh. Oh, there they go. It's a nightmare. Oh, speaking of birds though, 
Before we go pop into the show, let's say hi to Kevin. She's a pretty girl. She's my favorite bird. Hi, Kevin! <laughs> you're so cute! <laughs> oh, she saw your camera. Yeah, you're in there! <laughs> oh my god, she waved! Hi, Kevin! <laughs> She's so cute! Isn't she the best? Anyway, we saw Kevin. Um, but now, Feathered Friends in Flight is about a 20 ish minute educational show about birds. And I actually like it because I like Nat Geo and I like Discovery Channel and I like learning about different animals. Not super, super busy. Definitely don't need to use a lightning lane here. In fact, the return window is 2 to 2.30 and the show starts at 2.30. That's how little you need a lightning lane here because they're literally like, yeah, just come on in before the show starts. Anytime. Well, I enjoy the show. Thank you. All right. So the cast member said he tells people to be here 15 minutes before the show, knowing that most people won't actually show up till five minutes before the show. Um, and as you can see, even on a really busy day, Navi River Journey had a 120 minute wait last time I looked. This theater is not very busy. So I'm going to say booking this lightning lane saved me five minutes because I do think on an average day you can show up five minutes maybe 10 minutes before the show, if you really, really want to see it and grab a spot. While sitting here, let's take a look. First of all, I'm going to edit my selections. One of my best tips for using uh, Dizzy Genie is to set up your day and then pick your favorites and then you can uncheck them as you go. So that way you don't need to worry about them anymore. So I'm going to uncheck set of friends in flight. I'm going to uncheck meeting Mickey and Minnie and I'm going to check it's tough to be a bug. Not that I'm really worried about that one, but I just don't want to forget about it. And then you save it and then it pins those attractions to the top of your tip board. So that way you have your favorites up at the top and when you're fiddle battling and looking around it's such you're not scrolling through everything to find a certain attraction. So I think I need to book the animation experience next. It's gonna be a tight squeeze to get all the way up to Rafiki's Planet Watch from here, but gotta do what you gotta do. Um, Flight of Passage, did I check you? No, hold on, we gotta refresh. There we go. You can see here is where edit selections is if I want to change it. So I think I'm going to do this next. Dinosaur is a 15 minute wait and a 340. So about an hour and 15 minutes away for the return time. Lion King has next return time available. Got to keep that one on the radar because there's only, uh, let's see, there's a three o'clock, which I missed the return time for. I won't make it there in time. And there's a four o'clock and a five o'clock. So got to be aware of that. Talk to you, bud. No wait. Cali River Rapids looks like it's back, but it's still out of genie since it's been down all day. So... Let's see about that one. Kilimanjaro Safaris has dropped to a 25 minute wait and you can get a lightning lane for like any second now. Flight of Passage, that's your fancy ride. 120 minute wait, no lightning lanes left. Everest, 55 minute wait, but there are plenty of lightning lanes left. And uh, like I said earlier, Mickey and Minnie, 30 minutes. Now it was 55, no lightning lanes left. I would wager there's probably none left for Navi River Journey or they're all much later in the day and it's got 115 minute wait. Good, uh, good afternoon and welcome here to Feathered Friends in Flight. Like, really? Bird show complete. It's cute. It's definitely a little cheesy at times, uh, but I like seeing the birds, especially the one that sings. Now, I have about 15 minutes to get up to Rafiki's Plano Watch and tap in on time for my animation experience class. I don't recommend doing this. I don't recommend going from Asia all the way up to Rafiki's Plano Watch, do an attraction that doesn't even need a lightning lane most of the time. But you know what? It's not the spirit of the game. The reason I had to do that is because the last two things I'm really like worried about timing wise yes. are the animation experience because there's only a few classes left and the Lion King. So I've got a I've got an evil plan concocted and I'm just hoping nothing delays me. Made it to the train station. First thing, I don't know if you can hear that drumming, but they moved the acrobats over by Harambe Market, which I think was smart. I love them, but they kind of congested the area 
when they were right in the beginning of the Africa section. So if you're looking for the uh, the musical acts, I think they'll be over by Harambe Market now. Just waiting for my train now up to Rafiki's Plano Watch. It used to be considered its own land, but now it is considered part of Africa. But you still have to use a train, the Wildlife Express, to access it. You can't get there another way. Once you've ridden the train, which is kind of like an attraction in of itself, you'll be up at Conservation Station, which has the animation experience, which is what we're going to do. But they also have the affection section where you can meet real goats and sheeps and other animals. There's also a few small animal exhibits. And there is an observation window where you may see the animal keepers and the veterinary team working on different animals. Made it up to Rafiki's Planet Watch and scooting quickly to the animation experience. Hello, Rafiki. Thank you for having me on this adventure. The animation experience is about a 20 or 25 minute drawing class with a Disney character artist. It used to be in Disney's Hollywood Studios over at the animation experience before that turned into Star Wars Launch Bay. And because it's at Animal Kingdom now, they draw animals. So you're gonna possibly draw Simba or Bruce the shark or Shere Khan the tiger. And uh, so all the characters are animals and it'd be really cool if we were drawing like a hyena or a shark right now. Looks like we're drawing Thumper today. He's so cute, I've never drawn him. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my pencil. It's a nice, good one, and a piece of paper. Go find a seat. And then I think my plan is gonna be to book Safari. Try and do Safari before the last line. I love it in here because they've got pictures of famous Disney animators on the wall, including Walt Disney, and how they use real live animals as influence. Like you can see Frank Thomas with a dog there drawing Lady the Tramp. There's Walt Disney with deer drawing Bambi. Uh, and even animals here at Animal Kingdom are used in different animation pieces. Like the pigs out here were used in Moana. The lions were used in the live action Lion King. And it's time to go by. Welcome, friend. Here's my thumper. Anyway, I really like the animation class. I think it's fun. Even if your drawing ends up looking like this. It's very luxuriating and relaxing. And the artist was so sweet. Her name was Liz. I was talking to her before the class because I was sitting towards the back. She was like, oh, I like your nails. And I said, thank you. And then I was just chatting with her and I realized, oh wait, you're the artist, aren't you? And she goes, wait, oh my God, there's a sheep. Um, hello. <laughs> Casual. Um, <laughs> never seen that before. She uh, she said, I hope you have fun in the class. And I said, thank you so much. I'm not that good of an artist, but I always like the class. And she said, just believe in yourself. You'll do great. And I was like, oh, thank you, Liz. So here you go, passing that message on. Believe in yourself, friends. You'll do great. All right, we're back on a time crunch because I booked Safari, but then I realized my Navi River journey is now. So the catch is, there's only one more Festival of the Lion King at five o'clock. That show window is 4.30 to 4.50, which means whatever I do now, I have to get it done in time to book 4.30. Ooh. Train. Thank you, forward. I will Let's hustle. Go. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. All right, well, that was good timing. Thank you. All right, well, that helped. So what I'm saying is, whatever attraction I do, I've got about, by the time I get back to Harambe, I'm gonna have a little more than 30 minutes to do one of those attractions and then book Lion King. All right, let's take a look. So I booked Kilimanjaro Safari so when I got into the animation class, and then we also already have booked 325 to 425 Navi River Journey. I'm gonna see if I can modify it to move it later, but my guess is it's gone for the day. And even if I fiddle fiddle a few times, I'm not seeing one pop up. So I think I'm gonna go do Pandora and do Navi River Journey when I get off the train. And then um, I should have about 40 minutes to go to Pandora and then be able to book, uh, or then be able to book Festival of the Lion King. Now the question is, can I also make it to Safari since I have till 420 to ride Safari? Is there a chance I can do both before Lion King? Please to say, I've decided to do something that is either genius or very stupid. I'm gonna try and ride Safaris and Navi River Journey all before seeing Festival of the Lion King. 
why am I gonna go all the way to Pandora? To then have a gap in time to where I booked Festival of the Lion King, but I'm still waiting for the show to start. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna tap in right now at Kilimanjaro Safaris, book Festival of the Lion King. I will have from 4.30 to 4.50 to get to Festival of the Lion King. Right now it's almost four. So I have from now until 4.50 to ride Kilimanjaro Safaris and Navi River Journey. Can I do it? Is this foolish? We're gonna find out. Is this Pumbaa, I should say, because that means foolish in Swahili. I learned that on Kilimanjaro Safari. All right, Kilimanjaro Safaris right now has a 10 minute wait, but we are going in via lightning lane. So we're gonna have like a no minute wait. Hello. Hello, welcome in. Thank you, hi, how are you? Thank you. So Kilimanjaro Safaris only is a 10 minute wait. This park really dies down in the afternoon times. Remember when it was a hundred minutes earlier today? Hey there. I am gonna say this is a worth it attraction. Even though right now it's gonna be pretty much the same whether you are going through Lightning Lane or standby. Typically speaking, most of the day, it's had at least a 50, five, zero minute wait. It can get very, very long. It's usually well over an hour. So this is definitely a good one to use it on if you're purchasing it for here. But I think what you may also be seeing is that this park doesn't really need Genie Plus if you come in the e afternoon, evening time. And that's because since this park closes the earliest, most people start here and it's super busy from the morning until two or so when people can park hop and then it drops That was an amazing safari. The afternoon can be hit or miss. Sometimes it's too hot still, but it actually started sprinkling a little bit. And we saw the lions, the baby zebras, the rhinos, um, really good giraffe shots. And even though the African painted dogs were still out instead of the hyenas, which are my favorite animal on the safari, and they're only out in the late, late afternoon, the, the African painted dogs must have been about to go inside because they were up running around and I've never seen that before. The pile of Kilimanjaro safaris, definitely a must do at this park. You'll probably have the most active animals if you go first thing in the morning or um, around dinner time in the evening. As planned, I booked Festival of the Lion King as soon as I tapped in at Kilimanjaro safaris. And I have, it's about 4.15 right now. So I need to get to Navi River Journey and ride that and then get back to Festival of the Lion King by 4.50 when my lightning lane window ends for the last show. Made it into Pandora, the world of Avatar. Gonna go tap in over here at Navi River Journey. Remember, this is what I booked at 7 a.m. And then I just modified it a couple times throughout the day to get it into a later afternoon time when I actually wanted to ride it. That's why that modify feature is so helpful. If you have an attraction you really wanna do, book it and then try and modify it later if you get a time you don't want. But that way at least you've locked in that attraction. And oh dear, look how backed up this lightning lane is. Yikes. You gotta move quick. Oh no, this is disastrous. I've been in line like four minutes already. I know it's hard to read, but the standby line is 105 minutes right now, which is bonkers. So even though this is quite backed up and it's stressing me out because of Lion King, I think it will be much shorter than 105 minutes. And I'm also curious as to why it's so backed up. Now, this is one thing I will say. When an attraction has a backup like this, I don't know if it had a downtime earlier or what was going on, but a great example of what can happen here is Rise of the Resistance. So Rise of the Resistance often has a downtime. And then when it comes back up, anybody who had a lightning lane during the downtime and the time it comes back up gets to go through the lightning lane. So the lightning lane backs way, way up and the standby line basically stops moving. So I've had people be like, oh, it says it's a 105 minute line or it's an 80 minute line. There's no way it doesn't look that long. But yes, it is that long because they're greatly prioritizing the lightning lane over the standby line. I've counted at Rise of the Resistance before and it was like 20 lightning lane guests for every one to two standby guests. So 
don't think just because it looks short that there's no possible way that the line can be as long as it's posted because it sure can. Now, Navi River Journey is a slow moving boat ride through the bioluminescent forest here in Pandora. It's yeah. most known for having the most amazing animatronic in Disney World, the Shaman of Song. Absolutely incredible. I think it's a really nice attraction. I don't think it's worth 105 minutes. I don't think anything's worth 105 minutes, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so this is a great one. This is probably the number one choice to use that lightning lane on because I haven't seen it lower than 60 minutes throughout the day. And that's pretty standard. And I did talk to a cast member. He confirmed there was a downtime, which is why the lightning lane is backed up. So just be patient. Just be nice to the cast members. I assure you, it's still much faster than going to Navi River Journey. The queue ended up taking about 14 minutes in the lightning lane, which definitely worth it when you're looking at a 105 minute standby line. I really do think Navi River Journey is beautiful. I think it is very relaxing. I definitely don't think it's worth that long of a wait. However, if you're purchasing Genie Plus for this park, it's one you're going to want to do. I would say that's your number one to book just because of the wait times and how fast those run out. Nothing in this park runs out instantly the way that Slinky Dog Dash or Remy's Ratatouille Adventure can over at the other parks. But Navi River Journey typically runs out first, followed by uh, meeting Mickey and Minnie, and then sometimes Safari, sometimes Dinosaur. In the case of days like today, where Callie's been down for most of the day, Callie hasn't had me for like eight hours. I'm not complaining about. Uh, and then the shows, of course, can run out. So if we were going to tier the attractions in this park, I would think tier one would be Navi River Journey, Meeting Mickey and Minnie. Tier two would be Kilimanjaro Safaris. Although some days in the morning, Kilimanjaro Safaris can book up quickly. Um, Expedition Everest, Festival of the Lion King, possibly Dinosaur. And then tier three would be like Finding Nemo, Bird Show, Stuff to be a Bug, the Animation Academy. So it's it's quite different in this park. This park is kind of in between Epcot and Hollywood Studios as far as Genie Plus goes. Because at Epcot, if you remember, there's like three rides, three and a half rides if you count Soren, that get very long lines and are very worth having a lightning lane for. But then everything else is basically a walk-on. Studios has a bunch of bangers and then a bunch of shows you have to deal with. And this park also has a bunch of shows and it has a few bangers. So hopefully this has been helpful. I know I've enjoyed it. This is my favorite park. I don't know that. Rolling up to Festival of the Lion King with just a few minutes to spare. And even though this is the last show of the day, look how long that line is. Look how long that line is. I'm gonna ask the cast member how early they tell people to be here, especially for the earlier shows because I know those are even busier. But let me tell you from experience, this is when you cannot be late at. I have been one minute late and they're like, no, sorry. The show has to start on time and they have to start letting in all those people waiting and standby. So make sure you are on time to your lightning lane for this show because you do not want to miss it. Yeah. With the Festival of the Lion King return times, you are asked to be there between 10 minutes to 30 minutes prior to showtime. I am showing up right around that 10 minute mark. And I just spoke to the cast member and I asked her how early they tell guests to be here if they're not using a lightning lane. And she said 45 minutes. So the lightning lane is saving you at least 35 minutes for this show. You know what? I definitely think that's worth it. This is the highest rated show on property. It's absolutely amazing. It's my favorite thing in this park. It's one of my favorite things in all of Walt Disney World. It's about a 25, 30 minute show. 
featuring the music from The Lion King. No storytelling here. It's just beautiful singing and acrobats and puppetry and floats. And uh, it's amazing. It's it's simply incredible. And I'm so excited because I actually haven't seen it in a while. And uh, I'm, I'm giddy, honestly. Vessel of the Lion King done, check first of all, the woman who played Zawadi, the gift, the warthog section, she had the most beautiful voice. Maybe I've ever heard in that role. She sings Circle of Life at the end. I was like, tears just slowly streaming. She was so, so talented. So props to the whole cast, but she especially. Number two, I have not seen the show since they brought back the full audience participation. So they actually pulled members of the audience out at the beginning to do the different animal sounds. And then they pulled the kids out towards the end to do the little wrap around and shake the little shakers. And I was so excited to see that again, because it's been so long since I learned that a giraffe makes a low bleeding sound like a sheep. So I'm glad that we're back to some audience participation. An incredible show, definitely a good use of a Genie Plus because it is so popular that theater fills pretty much every show. Oh, amazing. Now we have two attractions left, um, technically three, but Cali River Rapids was down while I was in there. I don't know if it's back up again yet. If it is, it probably doesn't have any lightning lanes. I'm obviously not too pressed if I can't get one because it's Cali, um, but for science, you know, I'll keep an eye out. Other than that, it's tough to be a bug and dinosaur. So let's go. After I tapped in at Festival of the Lion King, I went ahead and booked Dinosaur because I had a 45 minute wait and I figured if one of them was gonna run out between those two, it would be Dinosaur. But it doesn't look like either one's going to at this point, so I think I'm gonna switch it over to do its stuff to be a bug since I'm gonna hit that one first on my trail and then end by a visit to Dr. Grant Seeker. Gonna show you how to modify something as we go. So there I have booked Dinosaur and I wanna change it to its stuff to be a bug and Cali River Rapids is down again, so. What a day it's been for Cali. So to modify something, you go and you click the three buttons, modify, and then it will show you everything in this park that you can change it to. You can change it to another time for that attraction. And if you want to fiddle faddle, you just pull down right here and it will refresh the screen. Um, or you can change it to any other attraction. But remember, you can only use each thing once. So if I tried to book something I've already done today, it would not let me. Um, but let's change this stuff to be a bug. And we'll do that right now. And then we will end, confirm the change, we will end with Dinosaur. Tabbed in at It's Stuck to Be a Bug, so I'm gonna go ahead and book Dinosaur to end our day. It's Tough to Be a Bug is a 3D show featuring Flick and Hopper and other characters from A Bug's Life telling you how tough it is to be a bug. Now, what I think is really cool about this attraction is that it's actually inside the Tree of Life. The theater is in the tree, which is awesome, especially because as you walk through the queue, you get a really cool view of the tree and the roots and the branches, and you can try and find some of those 325 plus different animals. I could literally stare at the tree for hours. What isn't as awesome about this attraction is that it terrifies a lot of people because people think, oh, cute 3D show with bugs. They don't think giant spiders hanging from the ceilings or hornets poking them in the back. Both of those things do happen. So if you have a child who doesn't like the dark or might be scared by those things, or if you're an adult who's scared of the dark or might be scared by those things, maybe skip this one. Because I don't know that I've ever been in the show and not had a child scream, like cry to the point where their parents have to take them out of the theater. So just, just keep that in mind. <laughs> that said, I think it's underrated and adorable. Now it's tough to be a bug had it posted 10 minute wait. If you see that, you can know that that's just how long it's gonna take you to walk through this long queue and uh, for the next show to finish up in front of you. Like most 3D shows such as uh, Muppet Vision 3D or the Disney Pixar Short Film Festival or Philhar Magic, most of the time the wait is just waiting for the show in front of you to finish up. So. 
I've already merged with the regular line. This isn't gonna save me any time by doing a lightning lane. Most of the time, you're not gonna need to use one here. I'm already to the waiting area. Gonna grab my bug eyes. Hello. Make sure you guys go over your bug eyes and then we're gonna all the way down to the area and move on. Thank you. I do like this waiting area. I think it's pretty funny. If you look around, the uh, posters are all different movie posters, but they're bug jokes. So this is like the Dung and I instead of the King and I. And then actually, this was a prop from the Dung and I. So it's funny if you walk around in here. It's tough to be a bug complete. You can't film in the show, but it is very cute. I enjoy it as a good break from the AC, as a reliable filler attraction. When I say filler attraction, I mean an attraction that doesn't usually have a long line and is a good break in between some of the more popular or longer lines. In this park, excellent filler attraction. Definitely not worth a lightning lane though. And now we are headed to our final attraction of the day. Unless somehow Cali River comes back and has lightning lanes available in the next 30 minutes. Dinosaur. A little fun fast, and I feel like it goes under-noticed and just continues to make my case that Dinoland USA is one of, if not the most themed lands in Disney World, and just, it's not explained well. But Donald's Dino Bash is a celebration that Donald is throwing because he found out that dinosaurs and birds are incredibly closely related. So he decided to throw a party to celebrate that because for a long time, we thought dinosaurs were like lizards, but they're actually more like birds. Dr. Alan Grant knew it was up because he did say it was like a turkey uh, in Jurassic Park. But Donald is just so excited that dinosaurs are like birds. So he throws Donald's Dino Bash, which is when they have the music playing around here. They have the different characters. That's why they're in Dino Land. They're attending the Dino Bash. And I just think that is very cute. Dinosaur coming at you hot, our last ride of the day. Low key, one of my favorite rides in Disney World. I told Max this was in my top 10 favorite rides at Disney World the other day and the look I received. But you know what? I can't help it. I love it. Dinosaurs, the OG thrill ride in this park. It's got a 44 zero inch height requirement and it puts you inside a time rover to go back and try and save a dinosaur. But you know, as things tend to do, on theme park attractions, something goes wrong. Now, Dinosaur only has a 20 minute wait right now, so I don't think we're gonna save a ton of time in the Lightning Lane. However, earlier, it had well over an hour wait. So, Dinosaur's kind of weird. It can be long, it can be a walk-on. And it depends on the day. Now, like it's tough to be a bug, Dinosaur does tend to scare some younger attraction riders. Even if they're tall enough to ride it doesn't mean they will not be scared because it is very loud, it is very dark, and there are large, full-size animatronic dinosaurs running at you. Hi. All right. There's our Carnotaurus friend. All right, moving quickly. There's your regular queue. I can hear Bill Nye. It's not even been two minutes and we're being led into the pre-show. That's where Disney stops the clock because at that point your experience has started. So I'm going to stop it at two minutes and I'm going to check if Cali River Rapids is open. Otherwise, our journey ends here. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. The Cretaceous period. It stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. All your rounds. Hydrosol. Dinosaur done, check. Now, I promised I would check Cali River Rapids. It was still down when I was getting on Dinosaur, but let's check one more time in real time so that you can see I'm not making it up just so I don't have to ride Cali River Rapids. All right, here's our tip board. Refresh the screen. It's thinking, it's thinking. Let's go to K, H-I-J-K, look. Cali River Rapids, still down. I'm not making this up just so I didn't have to ride it, though the Cali gods were more in my favor today than they ever have been. 
Uh, dinosaur was great. I love that attraction. It saved me like 18 minutes to go into the lightning lane. I am going to put dinosaur in the worth it category just because if you come in the earlier parts of the day, most of the day it had 45 minutes plus. So it's a good use of a lightning lane if you're purchasing it already. When it comes to all the attractions that I did today, 10 different lightning lanes in total saved 4.08 hours. But taking a look at just those attractions that I deemed kind of worth it, the more popular ones, the ones you want to focus on if you're using Genie Plus, Expedition Everest, Meeting Mickey and Minnie, Navi River Journey, Dinosaur Festival, The Lion King, and Kilimanjaro Safaris, we are looking at a total time saved of 3.83 hours. Not surprising. The attractions that you should use Genie Plus on are the longest waits, and that's where you're getting the most bang for your buck as far as hours go. But talking about bucks, let's look at the math. Again, it was $16 for Genie Plus today. I did 10 attractions, which means in total, every ride cost me $1.60, but those worth it attractions were $2.67. So yes, Animal Kingdom costs the least amount in total for Genie Plus. It also costs the least per attraction when looking at those worth it attractions, but it also saved me less time because these lines tend to be shorter than the other parks. When planning your Animal Kingdom day, if you're coming here in the morning, I do think Genie Plus is a better investment. Looking at the wait times this morning, again, Safaris was 100 minutes, Navi River Journey was 120 minutes, Expedition Everest was 45 minutes and 60 minutes. It's much, much busier here in the mornings than in the afternoons, because again, this park closes the earliest. A lot of people come here in the mornings and then park hop to a later park that has an evening spectacular um, versus coming into Animal Kingdom later in the day. Which means if it's your check-in day, you could do a lot in Animal Kingdom in the afternoon and then maybe head over to Springs or maybe you want to luxuriate a little bit, have a nice breakfast somewhere, a character meal, and then come in after that 2 p.m. park hopper time. Animal Kingdom is a great park. It's my favorite park and I think people are sleeping on it in the afternoon evening time. So that could be your key to success without purchasing Lightning Lane. So maybe just buy a flight of passage and then you wouldn't need Genie Plus for the rest of the attractions if you come in the afternoon. Either way, hopefully this is helpful for you to see what is offered at Animal Kingdom, what Genie Plus can do for you, help you with some tips and tricks. We've got one more park to do, that's Magic Kingdom. And then we're also gonna do a Park Hopper episode. So share your Magic Kingdom questions down below, share your Park Hopper requests down below. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do the Park Hopper episode, because I think I wanna go to all four parks, but do I do like a couple of these worth it attractions at each park? Like what? what's my vibe for the for the park hopper video to, to track that so drop your request down below let us know what else you'd like to see as well in the meantime friends make sure to rate review subscribe follow us on social media come hang out with us in discord and until next time friends i'm molly and it has been so magical bye thank you cali gods bye.